Welcome to The Ship Room, where we learn from tech leaders at some of the world's most successful companies. I'm Brad Anderson, I'm the Vice President of Microsoft 365. Today's guest is IGM Vice President of Infrastructure Services, Kieran McGuire. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. IGM is an organization, one of the largest financial organizations in Canada with more than $160 billion of investments that they handle. So tell us a little bit about IGM and just, just tell us a little bit about the scale. One of the things that we were talking through as we wanted to innovate the, the infrastructure was how do we make the back end and the front end more friendly? We talk about cloud a lot of the times, um, but to the end user, you know, whether that be our clients or our advisors, it's all gibberish, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, we can talk about VMs and and you know CASBs and all of these you know great p pieces of technology. So what we started talking about is we probably need to start changing the front end experience sooner rather than later so that we can actually show why it's important to go on the full journey. So we adjusted our conversation to how do we change the front end experience, the end user experience to be more modern, um, to be more like their home experience. I think I get a thank you for teams almost every day. Yes. And the reason being is when I joined the organization, it was a bit of a dog's breakfast uh, when it came to collaboration tools. We had a little bit of everything. We had conference bridges, we had, you know, we had Skype, we had blue jeans, we had Zoom, we had CenturyLink, Bell Lines, you kind of name it, we had a flavor of it. So the start of every meeting took about 15 minutes um, because we didn't know how to get the meeting off the ground because we were using one thing for video conferencing, another thing for audio conferencing, and it was, it was very, very painful. Teams has completely adjusted that. A very powerful statement was made to me probably about, mm, I'd say about a month ago. The majority of our team is in Winnipeg and we have one or two people in Toronto who have for a long time felt left out because we couldn't see them or we'd call them on the phone and they couldn't really hear us and we'd give them a bridge and we'd forget they were on the phone. Um, and the team's experience has removed all of that. The team actually feels more connected um, and, and they said, you know what, even when we go back into the office, we're going to keep having Teams meetings because we feel so much more connected. Hey, it looks like we're getting a call here. Hey, you're on the ship room here with, with Kieran. Who is this? The name's Naismith. James Naismith, inventor of basketball. The greatest Canadian export outside of syrup and moose jerky. This is an honor. Uh, do you have a question for Kieran? Just this morning, I was hanging another peach basket for the purposes of throwing an inflatable ball through it. So, since you have a fellow engineer there with you, I'll rattle off a few historically important inventions, and you tell me if they were created right here in our fair country in the north. First one up, electron microscope. No. Oh, I am so, so, so sorry. Juice boxes. We're gonna lay claim to that one. Java programming language. Ooh, Java programming language. I'm gonna say not Canada. Oh, here's a good one. Meat lovers pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we go with Canada. Any pizza without moose meat will never be loved here. Oh, walkie talkies. Over. Gonna go now? Wow, oh my god. Can I start, can we start over? <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna change my answers. That high five, where you do it up top, then swing it around and do it low. That seems very California to me. Last but not least, CPR mannequin. I'm gonna say Canada? A valiant effort. <laughs> but I do have one last question. I know that right now your organization is piloting the Microsoft Managed Desktop. What got you interested in using MMD? And what makes this a good fit for a regulated financial institution? A couple of things. We were moving away from um, a current partner that we work with. And uh, one of the things that we were talking through was changing the image itself. And when we were talking through what it would be to build out a whole new image with all net new tooling, and then of course the people that go behind it, um, we know how how much did we as an organization want to take on? And what was the best use of our resources time given? You know, we're not a technology company. 
at the end of the day. We are a financial institution. We really kind of need someone else to be doing that. Microsoft Managed Desktop hit so many of our points. It made the, in, the image itself much easier to use. It, the security aspects of it, which is paramount when speaking to a financial institution, was so well thought through. Um, and, and the Microsoft Managed Sock that comes with it was another thing that we were, we were just kind of blown away with because, you know, to know that um, the devices would be managed, or managed uh, and monitored 24 by 7 and taken out of circulation um, if certain parameters were ever met or if things or certain attacks were ever placed against the device, um, it became pretty apparent to us pretty quickly that partnership was actually going to make our lives a lot easier than they are today. The containerization, um, the innovation, and then frankly, um, just the ease of use were so top of mind when we started talking about MMD. You talk a lot about user experience. As you simplify all those back-end pieces, the user experience dramatically improves. And so we've seen, you know, for example, an 85% decrease in the boot time, the battery lives are doubling. Uh, and just the end user satisfaction is just through the chart because it, you know, their, their PC now feels like their phone in terms of the performance and the, 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 the snappiness. It just feels modern. Absolutely. I want to go back to one of the things that you mentioned. You talked about you kind of had a little bit of everything and, you know, it would take 15 minutes for a meeting to start. One of the reasons why a lot of organizations struggled with that is it had to do with how they thought about what the best solution was. And there's kind of been two lines of thought. The one is, hey, I'm going to think about um, best of breed in kind of a narrow band. And one is I'm going to think about best of ecosystem in terms of, I think about it more end to end. You know, has you, tell us what, how you think about that and has your thinking evolved over the last few months? Best of breed is interesting when it can be siloed, if it is a siloed product that is has a special niche. But when you talk through the end user experience, an ecosystem is so important um, because you need the device to work with the tooling, to work with um, to the, the collaboration, um, to make the end user's life easier. Um, because as technologists, we're responsible for more than just, um, is it, am I happy with the experience? Um, we need to be responsible for managing those devices. We need to manage the security of those devices. Um, and, and when you put contending products on, on, the, on it, you actually degrade that user experience. Whether it's you know collaboration tools that don't talk to each other correctly, whether it's management tools that don't talk to each other correctly, or whether it's security tools. Um, if you don't develop a strong ecosystem, you absolutely impair the end user experience and you actually cause the business to slow down. I can talk to many instances where what we've deployed from a best of breed product in a siloed view has impacted productivity. I'm a super strong believer that you have to have a strong ecosystem. The city of Toronto, like a thousand other places, has a coat of arms. And in these coat of arms, you know, there's a bunch of artwork, there's a bunch of symbolism in it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read off to you items that appear on the Toronto uh, coat of arms. And I want you to tell me, is it an actual, does it actually appear on the coat of arms or is it a fake? Is there a beaver on the, uh, on the Toronto coat of arms that, that represents industry and hard work? No. There actually is a beaver. There is. there is a beaver. How about a honeycomb symbolizing energy and productivity? Yes. Yep, you got it. Two people exchanging vague compliments represents Canadians' excessive politeness. I would agree with that, yes. It's a fake thing, but it's a true statement. Is there a bear for strength and determination? No. Is there a six-string guitar to represent the summer of 1969? No. Is there a city wall to show the authority of the city? Yes, there is. There is. And then finally, a top hat representing Canada's place on America's head. No. I would just love to hear some of your thoughts on the importance of STEM, STEM education, STEM careers for girls. I'm a very strong believer that um, we need to encourage uh, girls to, to take math more than we do. Generally speaking, girls are inundated with images and, and things where they need to be pretty or they need to be a certain way. When I was in high school, I had the option of advanced math or regular math. And, and I remember the teacher saying to me, you're not going to need advanced math, so you just 
you're fine and regular. Wow. It's stuff like that that is very discouraging to girls. And the reality is, without having the mathematics behind you, particularly in the earlier grades, so through high school, um, you know, and, and into going into university, if you haven't taken the math courses, your options for what you get to do in university are, are, are very, very limited. And it resonates very much with me because I was one of those people. Um, I, I got through college and, and, and when I went to go pick my university courses, I didn't have the math. So I actually had to take a year to, to get wow, the math wow. courses I needed um, to get into information technology management. I think it's really important and it's one of the things I actually speak about whenever I get the chance. Take the math courses. You may not use them, but at least you've given yourself the option. Well, one of the great parts about the ship room is we have AI that listens into the conversation and comes up with the most pertinent questions that relate it to the conversation that we've had here. So we call this the database dozen. How many legs can something have before it's creepy? Six. What's more embarrassing, dancing or singing? Singing. Do you have a favorite Ninja Turtle? Michelangelo. What's the most complicated recipe that you can cook entirely from memory? Butter chicken. What's the longest you've ever waited in line? Two and a half hours. It was for a Revlon sale. <laughs> I waited about 12 hours to get into a Depeche Mode concert back in 1988. Would you like dogs more or less if they hatched from eggs? Um, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> All right, well, hey, this has been fantastic. You know, Kieran, thank you for coming on The Ship Room. If people wanted to learn more about you, get in contact with you or more about the organization, where would they go? You can find me on LinkedIn. Thank you for watching The Ship Room. This is Brad signing off. I'm not so sure about these Canadian peaches. All right, let's go. <laughs>